Hey guys, what is up? It is No Help, and welcome back to another video today. In today's video, we're going to be doing the Corrupted Gauntlet. Anyone can PVM, anyone can do the Corrupted Gauntlet. It is very, very hard though, and it does take a lot of learning to go ahead and do. I'll go ahead and show you guys the scoreboard just to show you how difficult it is. I've completed it 48 times and I've died a total of 166 times. I've got it down pat now and I am pretty confident in completing the gauntlet now. So it does take a long time and there's so many things to learn. Um, I'm going to say a few things that I recommend you guys go ahead and do. First of all, for the Runelight plugin, so there is the Gauntlet minimap. All this will literally do is display what is on the map. Very useful to go ahead and have. Then there is also the Gauntlet plugin, which this will show you how many resources you want to go ahead and track, and you can switch it in here. What I have is seven ores, seven barks, seven of the fluffs, three um, of the herbs, two weapon frames, 20 paddlefish, and 320 shards. It'll just have a little display on your screen that will show you um, what you still need to collect. Once you mine, say, the ore, it will decrease. You can see how many you need left. The next plugin here is called Tile Indicators. As you can see on screen right now, the little blue box that's below me it shows your true tile. So as you can see, it will show exactly where the game knows that I am at. at any given moment very useful for going ahead and completing the boss here's the settings that i have for the true tile indicator on highlight the destinated tile is on and yeah one last rune light plugin that is extremely helpful is called the hunlift helper pretty much what you go ahead and do is the second you get into the boss room the second the uh attack hits you you click start and it will just pretty much go through a cycle and tell you what to pray so right now um it's saying that i'm praying range and to one switch to mage and then it just has a timer if you do get trampled you just click got trampled it will reset the timer it definitely helps it's not needed but recommend it the next thing that i highly recommend is setting up your f keys in game uh, this is pretty much essential to do the Corrupted Gauntlet or any PVM really. You can go ahead and copy mine if you'd like. Um, I only have it on for the inventory and obviously the prayers which is just F1 or sorry F2 for the prayers and F1 for the backpack. Um, makes it extremely useful so that you don't have to manually click your uh, inventory and bag. You can just quickly swap super easy like this. Makes it extremely useful for the gauntlet. The next tip I want to go ahead and give is go ahead and make yourself tier one armor and then go ahead and practice on the boss it doesn't matter how many times you go ahead and die that's why i have so many deaths is because i actually learned how to do the gauntlet by using tier one armor and just learning the boss mechanics themselves tier two armor makes the boss significantly easier but there's a lot of prep involved so to actually go ahead and experience the boss fight i recommend you make the tier one armor just so you can get into the boss and give it a feel you could also do the regular gauntlet to kind of learn on how to do it, but I recommend the tier 1 armor and going into the boss so that you know when you've made the mistake, right, and you can kind of correct it this time. I died 100 times trying to go ahead and do it on the tier 1 armor. I did get a couple kills actually though, but uh, this is how I pretty much learned on how to do the prayer switching and everything possible like that so once you kind of get confident enough i recommend moving to the tier 2 armor and this will make it so you can get consistent runs last thing i want to say is be patient with it and allow yourself to die as many times as possible to go ahead and learn that's the only way you're going to truly learn it you could watch a million videos but the only way you're actually going to learn it is by doing the activity all right, so let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna go ahead and enter the Corrupted Gauntlet and be as quick as we possibly can. So we're gonna go ahead and light this one up. And as you can see in here, there is a creature. We're gonna scout out the areas. So we have the roots and the fluff. So we're gonna go ahead and take those the second this rat dies. Pretty nice. He dropped the weapon frame right away, which is very helpful. So we're gonna go ahead and chop the trees now. As you can see, the little helper on the side will show you how many materials we still need to go ahead and collect. So this is not looking too bad so far, but you never know. We could get very unlucky. So this room has a bunch of fluff in it. So we're going to go ahead and take the remainder of the fluff that we need. In, in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and light all the doors just to see and scout out the area. 
So as you can see in here is the first demi boss, which is a bear. Interesting. We're going to light up this one as well. Now we are done with the fluff. So there's another tree in here. And there's also a ore. We're going to go ahead and chop the tree fully down. Kill the rot. And he dropped a leaf, which is actually pretty nice. And we're going to go ahead and mine this out. We still need one bark. So what we can go ahead and do is click the bark right after this. And after that, we can drop the axe because we don't need it anymore. Head up to here. So there is some more ore in here, which is actually really nice because we're already done the prep after this room. So we're going to go ahead and mine the remainder of the ore that we need. Perfect. And after this, we can go ahead and drop the pickaxe and we're going to pick up this other route on the way back to the main base. Sometimes I use my teleport crystal here, but uh, since we're very close to the base, I'm going to go ahead and save it. So the first corrupted uh, or the first demi boss is a bear. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is make my first weapon as the first demi boss, which just definitely helps you because it you know what i mean you don't you want to try and save uh all the materials possible so if say for example we made the staff right then we wouldn't have uh if we didn't find the the proper demi boss after that then you know what i mean we wouldn't get the actual uh the full potential out of the run so we're already messing up here so we're gonna make some vials fill up the vials with water and go ahead and kill the demi boss Okay, so now that the inventory is a little bit more clear, what we can go ahead and do is start fishing a little bit just to get some food. Because we already know where the first demi boss is. Hopefully the second one's here and it will be a nice clean run, but it's probably not going to be like that. <laughs> we still need one more herb as well, which hopefully we can get as a drop or we can find one very quickly. Hopefully, nope, it's not in here. So there's some fish in here and then the demi boss. So we'll get the fish because we're definitely going to need some food for the final boss. All right, so we're going to go ahead and kill the very first demi boss here. Hopefully it's uh, a quick kill. So for 100%, we will be using the halberd in the boss fight, which is interesting. A lot of people say they, they don't like the halberd, but it actually does do a lot of damage in the boss, so it can be helpful. It is a little bit more annoying, though, to use the halberd rather than the bow or the staff, but whatever demi boss you get, I highly recommend you just take what you can get. And if you can do it while scouting, it makes it a lot easier for the run. Take the next weapon frame as well, and hopefully the next demi boss is in this room. Okay, unlucky. So now we kind of just have to run and hopefully get ourselves a demi boss. Now we can, in the meantime, make our potion. Okay, so we're going to pray for him, range on, and kill the next demi boss. Make our potions while killing it to save time. Not looking too bad so far. Okay, now the only real struggle that we have is shards. So you want to try and find the level 2 creatures to kill. And another herb is very nice as well. So we're going to go ahead and take that herb. Kill anything you can just to collect some more shards. So now the only really thing we need is a little bit more food maybe and some more shards so that we can go ahead and make the armor in enough time. We still have our teleport seed so we're looking pretty good for this run. It is kind of unfortunate that we haven't found a level or a tier 2 guy yet but it is what it is. We still also... Oh no, we've got the, the last herb needed. I didn't think we had the herb there. Okay, it's not looking too good for extra things to fight. So we're going to go ahead up here, cook the rest of the food. Still have two minutes left on the timer, which isn't bad. Ideally, I'd like a little bit more though, but... Once you cook the food, drop 
the food and go pick up your armor. I hope we have enough uh, shards, but we might not. It is what it is sometimes, depending on the run. So, we're going to go ahead and make the attuned staff. And then the other one we have was the bow, so we'll make that one. I'm not sure if we're going to have enough here. No, we don't have enough, so we're going to have to get a little bit more shards, which sucks. Hopefully we get a fish spawn, because that would make it a little bit more easy. But, whatever we need to go ahead and do, I think we need about 80 more. Perfect, there we go. Kill these guys quickly. Maybe they can drop some more paddlefish as well, that is perfect. That's all we need. Alright, cool. Come up here, make the last bit of the armor. All right, perfect. Then we're going to go ahead and mix the potion so that we just have one. Oops, I didn't mean to drop that. Put that here, put the potions here, drop the rest of this stuff, and cook the remainder of the food. <laughs> and we'll pick up the rest of the food here as well. All right, so he's praying from uh, melee, so we're going to put the range one on at the start. Put this on, and we'll put the thick skin on as well. Drink a potion. We're going to use the Hunlift Helper, so sorry if you guys can hear that, but that's how I kill the boss. So we're going to go into the room, attack, put the Hunlift Helper on. Hopefully get a hit in here. Nope. Very unlucky with the hit so far. Running is the best time to eat food when you're running away from the tornadoes. Hopefully we can land a couple uh, good hits in here. Nice. Nice. Another good hit. Drink a potion. Eat a piece of food. Right from mage. Run up to here. Now, my biggest advice is honestly not stress during the boss, but I'm, I know that's hard not to do. And don't look at the health. That's something that just distracts you, just looking at the health for no reason. Not too bad so far. We're a little low on health here, but we're looking healthy. Avoid the tornadoes at all costs because they, they're the ones that are gonna do the most damage, obviously. And the the I found the tiles and the tornadoes do the most damage. The boss does nothing. If you can get the correct prayers, the boss does nothing. Sw make sure you switch the prayers. That's why I really like the uh, tier 1 armor, because you get to learn how to actually do the boss before you take it on. <laughs> Because I wouldn't be this good at switching if it wasn't for my tier 1 experience. And I'm not the best at switching, I'm not saying I'm good, but... Alright. I have a really cool tip for the final stage as well, but hopefully I can get to show it. Misclick there. Mage. Doing a decent amount of damage here. <laughs> okay, so that's kind of my advice there is 
when the final four tornadoes come out, you want to run sort of to the center and then they'll all kind of form into one format. It makes it a little bit easier to manage because then they're all kind of in one spot. Just makes it a little bit easier. I'm going to save up here because I kind of messed up there. Hopefully we can land a few good hits in here. Not too bad. Pretty clean. Nice hit there. All right. So here's what I mean. Run to the center, run to the outside. You get the tornadoes off of you pretty nice. And they all kind of go into one tornado, which makes it easier to avoid. And there we go, man. We've completed the Corrupted Gauntlet with a ton of food and a full potion left. So we could have made a lot more mistakes, obviously, than we did. We can turn the Hunlift Helper, <laughs> Hunlift Helper plugin off now. And go ahead and loot the chest. And actually a decent haul there. 300k. We got two room plate bodies, two dragon halberds, fire crystal shards, and 130 death runes. But overall, uh, that's KC49. Um, it's definitely possible for you guys to go ahead and do. And uh, yeah, as you can see from my KD ratio, it does take a lot of learning to go ahead and do. I can confidently do it now. Most of the time, I'd say every five attempts I die one or two times. But uh, I'm still learning. But uh, we can always we can only improve really from here. And uh, it it's a little bit of luck to get good spawns and get your armor and whatever prepped, but I've had runs where I've had half an inventory of food and a tier 2 staff and say like a tier 3 helmet or something and I was still able to get the kill so it is possible. If you want to go ahead and try to do the tier 1 all of the time then be my guest but uh, I use the tier 1 armor as more of a practice on the boss but uh, yeah anyways thank you guys so much for watching the entire video today. If you went ahead and watched the whole video go ahead and comment the gauntlet cape down in the comments below. Thank you guys, and I will catch you in the next one. See ya later.